Happy Mother's Day again. And uh, so Brenda's going to do a reading. You? Yeah. So we're kind of taking over today. So Brenda's up first. since I've been up here and um, hello it's good to see you guys from this side and, and um, happy Mother's Day to to everyone that um, that's here and up there um, this is the second year that um, my mom has been passed away and when I've had a lot of moms throughout my life and when my mother couldn't be there. So I've been very blessed to have friends that their moms took me in and loved me when I needed that love. I've, um, I've been very blessed with that. And I've had several mothers, not just one. So they come into your life in seasons. Then, when I got married, I didn't know what to call my mother-in-law. Do I call her Nancy? Do I call her mom? Because, you know, I've called all of my girlfriends moms. And she told me no. Well, that hurt me to the core. And it wasn't until I lost my mom and I understood what she meant. You only have one mother. You only have one mother. And you need to respect her and love her with all your being. So I appreciated after many years of that, but she treated me like her own. Um, and I want to tell you, ladies, that you are wonderfully made. For you are created in the utmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderfully made. If someone along the way has told you that you're not enough, that you don't belong, that um, you've been written <clears throat> down, don't believe them. Because God said you're wonderfully made. You're made in his image. There is nothing, nothing that we can't do because we are God's children. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. God knew the, the hairs on our head before we were born. He knew us. He had the plans for us before we were even thought of. We can't see his plans because they would be so overwhelming and we would never be able to understand it. We could never see how it would all knit together. And... Even now, going back and looking in the Bible, sometimes it takes a few minutes to figure out his plan and how that all brought Jesus to us and how that plan is still working today. <clears throat> Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I pray this for my girls all the time that they have that relationship with Jesus that the Lord would give them what they desire you know um, as mothers we don't always um, pray for ourselves we pray for everybody else but did you ever pray for yourself 
that God would give the desires of your heart to you because you're worthy. You're worthy. And you deserve the desires of your heart. <clears throat> because I, I, you, can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthened me. No. God is beside us. He's behind us. He's before us. Have you ever been, um, and this is leading up to that virtuous woman, because mm -hmm. I know that there's some of you out there, but I, I do not feel like I'm the virtuous woman. Okay. I'm late. Joe says, oh, you're early today. <laughs> I am late. <laughs> but have you ever been late and then you're on the highway and there's an accident? And you're like, thank you, Jesus, because if I would have left on time, that could have been me. If I left, if my kids left when they were supposed to, that could have been them. I remember one time, um, Jordan left before us, and we were at my sister's house in Tennessee, and, you know, it's kind of hilly, and, you know, it's Tennessee. And there was an accident, and we were stopped. And all I could think about was that Jordan left before us. I got out of that car, and I just started running because I was afraid it was her. Thank God it wasn't. It was um, a gentleman that was on a motorcycle, but he was okay. I mean, but you know, you just have that fear, like when you've lost your child in the grocery store or at Walmart, and then you just start to panic. Okay. Um, her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. You know, yesterday was so awesome. Our ladies' luncheon was so, it was, it was nice. It was nice to get back together. It was nice to see everyone. But um, we talked about legacy and what we're leaving for our children. And I don't know what my legacy is. I, I've thought about this. Um, I didn't want children when Denny and I got married because shortly after he would go someplace and he'd say, I wouldn't bring that stroller here. Look at all these people here. And we can't get through because of that stroller. Or you go to the restaurant and they're screaming and you're just wanting a nice dinner. And if I was them, I'd just leave. I'm like, what are we going to do? Lock these kids in the closet for 18 years? So we talked about um, yesterday about our family. I did not come from a Christian family. Um, in Tennessee, we would go there every summer. And those are my most precious moments. Now I know my grandma and grandpa were, were saved, but they didn't go to church. Um, but you could just feel the love and warmth in their home. And no memory can, nobody can take the memories away from me that I would go and help my grandpa in the slaughterhouse, or I would help my grandma in the kitchen. And I would carry water from the spring because we had no water, you know, and heat it up, and I would help them in the garden. And that's when I decided I wanted children, because I wanted my children to know their grandparents and have that love that they had. So getting back to the virtuous woman, I am not her. Um, I would hope that my children would see some virtues in me that they would call me blessed. I would hope that they would remember the times that um, I took Jordan, um, she had her first dance, and I know a lot of us have experienced that. 
with our grandkids. Jordan's first dance was some Hawaiian thing, and she um, wanted to go get an Hawaiian outfit. And I said, oh, that would be awesome because I want to get one too. And she goes, what do you mean you're getting a Hawaiian outfit? I said, well, because I'm chaperoning that dance. She goes, oh, no, you're not. It's for teachers only. I said, I know people. <laughs> I know people. I'm going. She goes, well, Mom, I've got to get my hair fixed. That's a wonderful <coughs> idea because i got to get my hair all flipped up too. Mom. So I let her, I mean, she was to the point where she now was not going to this dance because I was going to be the chaperone. <laughs> so she went on to the dance. She had a wonderful time. And then later she <coughs> says, Mom, I love the fact that you want to do things with me. And I love the fact that you want to be with me. But you don't have to do everything, OK? <laughs> <laughs> So on this Mother's Day, I pray that each one of you have a special day, that you feel the love of your children, the love of friends, and that you feel the love of God most of all wrapped around you. Thank you. Okay. So... Um, <clears throat> what I want to talk about today, I had on my heart for uh, about this close to a month now. And so, um, so much so that I thought, well, <clears throat> I should um, I should write this down and kind of have it in my back pocket in case, you know, Brent's sick or something like that, you know, that I'd have something, you know, that I could talk about. And um, so he came to me and Nancy, um, I don't know, but last Sunday probably, and said, hey, do one of you guys want to bring the message? And right away I piped up, oh, I've got something. I said, okay. And Nancy was like, <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so, but uh, let me tell you something. What he does is not easy. Because I had the idea, it's been on my heart for weeks, um, but putting it like on paper, and having the Bible verses to go with it and everything um, is um, it's kind of hard. So um, so I got this together, but I um, want to go to the Lord in prayer real quick. So let's all bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much that we can be here together today. And we just thank you um, for all the mothers, grandmothers, um, the women of our church that, that um, are, are like mothers to us. Lord, we just... Um, we want to lift each one up and give a special blessing to them this morning. Um, we just want to um, thank you for the, the mothers that we've had that have gone on uh, to be with you, Lord. And we just pray that you would bless this time, that you would bless this message, and that you would um, just give us a, a great day in you, Lord. We thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, as Brenda had already mentioned, um, yesterday we had a great luncheon. It was great to be back. We've missed it for two years. We had 30 ladies yesterday. That's a blessing. That's amazing. Um, so, um, but any time that we get together, it's a blessing. Um, so, several weeks ago at one of our uh, Thursday night ladies meetings, um, the topic came up about people that we were missing in church. You know, um, and Brent has mentioned many times before that COVID has been devastating on church attendance. So, um, and so we, uh, we were dis discussing how sad we were, um, the state of the world that we're living in, and we questioned how anybody can go through life without God, and how do you deal with all the trials that come up, and how do you tell your children right from wrong, you know, if, they're, if your truth is not grounded in the Lord. Um, so, and I'm sure that, uh, that like me, um, you all have uh, friends or family that say that, um, oh yeah, they believe in God. They believe in Jesus. You know, but <clears throat> then their life, it, it just doesn't really reflect that. You know, um, so they don't go to church, they don't read their Bibles, and they don't follow God's commands. Um, so what we're witnessing is people who don't have a problem thinking that Jesus saves. I mean, who would have a problem with that? A, a, a guy that's going to save you? That's awesome, right? Um, so, but even at, uh, 
at our sporting events and different things we'll see even on TV. There's always somebody that's holding up that jump, 316, you know, got their big stuff up. And no one really has a problem with that, I don't think. Um, but everyone knows that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So <clears throat> that's a nice thought. People think, oh, yeah, that's great. But I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'll just keep that in mind in case I need it, you know. Um, I'm doing just fine on my own. But when we need a Savior, when we feel like we're drowning, that hand comes up, it reaches down, and it pulls us up. And that's our Savior. So, <clears throat> when Brendan was little, kind of like that. Um, when Brendan was little, uh, about three years old, we had gone to Slate Run Farm in uh, the park that's just up the road here. And um, I think we were there for one of uh, Luke's like preschool kind of field trips or something like that. So, um, but I had Brendan with me. And um, so we walked down by the water and they have these like um, docks that go out, you know, and there's no rails. And then they kind of branch out a little bit like this. Um, so I was standing there and I was right beside him. You know, I'm always right beside him. I'm not going anywhere, I'm always right beside him. So we walk out a little ways and then it kind of turns this way. And you can look back and there's the bank right there. And so Brendan spotted a frog on the bank. So he's, he's scrunched down like this, you know. He's looking at that frog and he's looking at that frog. And the next thing I know, whoop, whoop, whoop. He's in the water. Split second, you know. And, and it was close to the bank. So he, you know, he could have stood up and he'd been fine. But he's like, you know, and like just lightning fast, I grab him up and pull him up out of the water. And he's all panicked and everything, you know, and so, you know, like mom, I'm like, hold him, get him, try to get all that muck and gross stuff off of him and clean him up. And he's crying I'm like, you're okay, it's okay, I'm right here, you know. And um, <clears throat> so I think that's how, how Jesus is with us, you know. He's always right there, always right beside us, whether we know that he's there or not. And then when we, like, stumble, when we fall, when we need him, he's right there to reach down and pick us up, you know. And um, so everybody is okay with the idea of Jesus as Savior. You know, everybody likes a good hero, good hero story. So I'm trying to go this way. Yeah, Jesus. Superhero, I'm here to save you. So, <clears throat> um, especially little boys. Little boys love superheroes. Um, so, in BBS, which is coming up in June, have to put a little plug in there for that. Um, we always, uh, with the kids, we always teach them A, admit to God you're a sinner, B, believe that Jesus is God's Son, and C, confess that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. <clears throat> um, so uh, it's all about repentance, you know, turning away from your sin, turning towards God. And um, the angels are rejoicing when one sinner repents, and it's the most joyous occasion. But for some people, that's as far as it goes. <coughs> They're okay with Jesus as Savior. But where are they? Why aren't they here at church? It comes down to this. Many people have decided to make Jesus their personal Savior, but they have yet to truly embrace him as Lord. The first part asks people to ask for forgiveness for their sins. The second part's a little bit harder. You have to summon people to a lifetime of devoted discipleship to Jesus. You have to invite others to follow you, or not follow you, follow him as you are. Um, so let's look at today's passage. This is in, and it's pretty small, isn't it? Sorry. Um, it's from 1 Peter, verse, or chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. 
They are surprised that you do not join them in their reckless, wild living, and they heap abuse on you. But they will have to give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was preached, even to those who are now dead, so that they might be judged according to human standards in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. <clears throat> The end of all things is near, therefore be alert and of sober mind, so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised in <coughs> Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So when we look at verse 1, Peter points out how Christ suffered in his body, and we should have that same attitude. But what does that mean? I believe it means Christ was willing to make a sacrifice to save us, and that we should do the same. Romans 12.1 Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Verse 2 reinforces that thought by emphasizing that we should live for the will of God and not for ourselves. In verse 3 through 5, Peter tells us to avoid sin and not go back to our former way of life. It's not always an easy thing to do. You have people trying to pull you back to your old ways. They can't understand why you won't join them, and they don't understand salvation, and they don't know how the Holy Spirit lives in you. But it's important to not go back to who you were before, not only for your life on earth, but also for the one to come, because judgment is real. All people will face the judgment, so living in God's will is essential. In 2 Corinthians 5.10, it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. <clears throat> Verses 7 through 11 um, shows us how we should live if Jesus is our Savior and Lord. Um, so let me read that part again. It said, The end of all things is near. Therefore be alert and of sober mind, so that you may pray. We need to pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. We should all be very loving, which I think we're really good at here. <laughs> we should offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. I don't think we are. Um, each of us should use whatever gift we have received to serve others, that we should be faithful stewards of what a God, God has given us. And if anyone speaks, they should do as one who speaks the words of God. And if anyone serves, they should do that with the strength that God provides. Because ultimately, our, our goal is that Jesus be glorified in everything that we do. Um, so back to our discussion from the ladies' meeting. I don't understand why people, some people, haven't focused their lives on the Lord. Um, the only way I know to bring them back is to keep reaching out. Let them know that we love them. Let them see your light shine and make them um, want what you have. Most importantly, we need to pray for them. God has placed them on our hearts for a reason. God wants them close to him as well, so we can be assured that we are praying in God's will when we pray for them. In the meantime, look at ways that you can draw closer to God and keep Jesus as Lord of your life. <coughs> That's it. <laughs> so, thank you. So I told Brent, I said, this is really hard. I said, you know, how long does it have to be? And he's like, you know, usually, you know, try to keep it like, what, say, like around 15, 15 20, minutes. 20 minutes or something. I said, okay. I said, I got it all down. I said, I'm going to go read it out, out loud, and I'm going to time myself. So I set the timer on my phone. I'm reading. And I come back, and I said, I think it's only like nine minutes. He goes, that's okay. 
<laughs> so, anyways, just gives me a little more appreciation for what he does every week. So, anyway, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. Uh, we probably need to text the boys to come in. Okay. No, no jokes. No jokes. <laughs> I didn't have any dad jokes. That's how we fill some time up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so well, while he's getting them, I will tell you that I've had zero sleep. <laughs> so, um, so probably about 8.30 last night, Brent started feeling not well. And, um, you know, so I'm kind of trying to help him, and he was having, like, stomach pain and stuff here. And um, then he started throwing up really bad. Um, so we were afraid that he had a, um, a, a, another hernia or a blockage, something, which is what he had several years ago. So and he's, you know, we don't want to go through that again. That was not fun. So, um, so he kept not feeling well and everything. And so finally about 2.30 in the morning, we're like, okay, we'll go to the emergency room. So we were at the emergency room at 2.30 and I think we got home at like, what, 6.30 or something like that. So I haven't been to bed since like, what, Friday night? <laughs> so, so I'm on like my fifth win. <laughs> well, you did quite well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, but it has been on my heart for a while, so. Okay. So, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Am I over? Marilyn said she's going to have her watch. She's going to play the Minnie Mouse thing when I'm over my time. Right on time. <laughs> Always. Okay. A little quicker than I'm used to. Well, <laughs> did you make him say that? No. <laughs> so, we, you want to do the, the, the raw or you have some of the What? You want to do the raw? Yes, did you want to do the raw? Oh, I can understand what you're saying. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know what it is. I have a job for you.
for the happy song. DJ starts off this song too.
So he, they take him back, and he tells the nurse that his pain, and they ask him, what's your pain level? He says, eight. It's right out of, 10. Out of 10. Out of 10 is about an eight. So then, um, so they get him all kind of checked in, situated, and then they bring me back, and him, we go to another room. And uh, so he gets laid down in a bed before he's sitting up in a chair. So he's laying down in bed then, and uh, so we're waiting for the doctor person to come in, and uh, he's like, hey, he's kind of stopped hurting. And then, and then uh, the doctor comes in, and he's like, well, it's kind of, I mean, it still hurts when I push on it and stuff, but it's not hurting like it was. She said, well, what's your pain now? He said, like a two or a three maybe and stuff. And uh, I, so I told him, I said, your mom's at home and she's praying for you. It probably just went away. <laughs> and uh, so, and, and, it just, and it did. So it's the strangest thing is like, he was fine and then he was like, not fine. And then he was, yeah. And then he, um, it just went away. So, and so the doctor said it was blocked. They did a CAT scan. It was blocked. Yeah. But it's, it's it went away. Wow. Yeah. Praise the Lord, right? Praise the Lord. Yeah. Not yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah.